Looking at the world, the scenery is still better on this side. When Xi Jinping said this phrase during the 2024 Chinese New Year, it stunned the Chinese population. There's nothing now that can stop the Chinese economy, now a broken down vehicle, from racing straight towards a cliff. In recent years, this series of moves by the CCP authorities forced the global companies to accelerate its exit and decouple from the Chinese economy. It also made more Chinese people gradually realize who is responsible for pushing the economy and people's livelihoods to the brink of collapse. Let's make a comparison to highlight the current situation of the Chinese economy. During the Chinese New Year, all three major indexes in the United States continue to rise. The S&P index rose by 1.4%, surging past 5,000 points. The Nasdaq index rose by 2.3%, reaching 16,000 points. The Dow Jones index also rose by 0.04%. On February 15th, the Taiwan stock market surged by over 600 points in the morning session, reaching a historic high of 18,725 points. On February 13th, the Japanese stock market broke 38,000 points for the first time in 34 years. The total market value of the Tokyo Stock Exchange surpassed that of the Shanghai Stock Exchange on January 11th this year, reclaiming the top spot in Asia. This reflects investors' different outlook on the economic growth of the two countries. India has become the new favorite of international investors. In 2023, overseas funds poured more than $21 billion into the Indian stocks, and global pension funds and sovereign wealth management institutions have also shown increasing favor for India. India is seen as the best long-term investment opportunity. On January 22nd, India's stock market reached a market value of $4.3 trillion, surpassing Hong Kong for the first time, becoming the world's fourth largest stock market. As Hong Kong declines, the title of Asia's financial center shifts to Singapore, with a large influx of funds and talent pouring into the country. The small Southeast Asian country of Vietnam is experiencing rapid economic development, affecting a large amount of investment in manufacturing. Working in Vietnam has become a common phenomenon for people from neighboring Guangxi, China, which was unimaginable in the past. While Asian neighbors and countries in Europe and America are all experiencing positive economic trends, only the Chinese economy appears to be withering. Since the beginning of 2024, the Chinese stock market has been in continuous decline, even with China's central bank lowering the reserve requirement ratio by 0.5%, and expected to inject up to 1 trillion yuan into the market, it is still difficult to save the weak and struggling stock market. The Chinese and Hong Kong stock markets have become the only two markets in the world that have been declining continuously for three years. The decline of the Chinese economy has led to widespread distress among the people. The youth unemployment rate remains high. Without considering the usual discrepancies in government data in China, and before the Chinese Statistics Bureau stopped publishing the youth unemployment rate, the unemployment rate among youth aged 16 to 24 had reached 21%, setting a new high since statistics began in 2018. This means that in China, one out of every five graduates faces the dilemma of graduating into unemployment. It's been a whole month since I officially started looking for a job. I've sent out nearly 200 resumes, interviewed at less than 10 places, and haven't received a single offer. I'm starting to doubt myself. I always thought I was pretty smart, could pick up things quickly, but not a single company wants me. Finding no job like this university graduate is too common in China today. And with elders to support and children to care for, middle-aged professionals who lose their jobs suffer even more. After being laid off, they fear their families finding out, spreading anxiety. So they often dare not stay at home and can only pretend to go to work normally every day from 9 to 6 at Starbucks or go to the library hoping for a chance at an interview. It's been almost two months since I lost my job. I have no money, can't afford coffee, just sitting here at Starbucks. There's nothing I can do, just sitting here. As the housing and stock markets plummet, the wealth of China's middle class is rapidly draining away. Private companies are losing confidence. 
business owners are turning into being ride-hailing drivers if they did not have to struggle with debt in the first place. But the surge in delivery drivers and ride-hailing drivers has led to severe competition for orders, making these jobs barely profitable anymore. Where is the hope? Where is the way out? It seems nobody has an answer. Certain dark phrases are now popular in China, such as run, referring to emigration. People who don't meet the conditions are discussing crossing the line, which means illegal immigration. The wealthy are discussing underground banks and how to transfer assets overseas. These dark phrases have become hot topics among these groups. To outsiders, solving the decline of the Chinese economy isn't actually difficult. American economist Paul Krugman believes that ending financial repression, allowing more economic income to flow to households, and strengthening the social security network is all that's needed. At the end of June last year, mainland Chinese researchers released the Midterm Analysis and Forecast Report on China's Macro Economy in 2023, which mentioned that the key to solving the problem lies in improving the rule of law and protecting private property rights. They believe this can restore the confidence of the Chinese people in the rule of law lost since the COVID-19 pandemic. However, sadly, this is not the way the CCP thinks. From first-tier big cities to towns and villages, they are filled with empty shopping streets, crowds of unemployment, bankrupt large factories and companies, homeowners struggling with unfinished buildings, investors losing everything. These scenes of depression everywhere are the scenery Xi Jinping calls better. Just to maintain his personal image, he disregards the Chinese people, stimulating and humiliating them without reservation. Even Kim Jong Un, another authoritarian ruler, wouldn't dare speak like this in public, since the scenery is better on this side. In Xi Jinping's eyes, there's no economic problem to solve. The only problem is dealing with those who point out the economic problems. The CCP authorities have handed over the solution to the propaganda department. And the National Security Department, promoting the so-called "bright theory of China's economy." Chinese official media, like Xinhua News, refute accusations of China's economic decline by international media and publish numerous articles attacking the economy of Western developed countries. Consequently, domestic economists with a conscience either cannot or dare not speak out. The CCP believes this will prevent bad news from leaking out. The CCP's disdain for human rights not only rejects democratic reforms, but also reinforces its one-party rule, inevitably inflicting more damage on economic growth and spiraling into a destructive loop. After the U.S.-China trade war, the lifelong chairman system, the crackdown on private economy, the suppression of Hong Kong, three years of zero COVID policy, Shanghai's lockdown, support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and so on. The CCP's path is becoming increasingly clear to the world. The Chinese people are gradually waking up, seeing clearly who is responsible for all of this. On December fourth last year, the final issue of the Chinese magazine Selected Essays featured a cover cartoon depicting a large hand pointing forward, with people running along the direction indicated by the hand, falling into the abyss one after another. This was seen as mocking Xi Jinping. Inside sources reveal that local officials, including ordinary civil servants, routinely disregard the repeated orders from the central government, and inaction has become the norm. Their favorite pastime remains attending banquets, only with more caution. In various gatherings, there's a phrase that everyone likes to say. Whenever something ridiculous or annoying is mentioned, they often refer to that pig is also like this. Sometimes, when expressing dissatisfaction with superiors, they vent their frustration on that pig. And when someone says it's all because of that pig, it triggers laughter because everyone knows it's referring to Xi Jinping. Over the next decade or even longer, there's no doubt that there will be no improvement in the economy of China. The question the world needs to face now is: How should other regions of the world respond to the continuous decline of the Chinese economy? Or even its longer-term zombification and stagnation, considering China's enormous size as the world's second-largest economy and its role in years of globalization, this is by no means a trivial matter. The notion that China's GDP will soon surpass that of the United States has all disappeared. 
The international community is generally pessimistic about the Chinese economy, with various rating agencies consistently lowering their expectations for China's economy. Investment banks and security firms such as Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and UBS generally expect the downturn in the Chinese housing construction market to continue in 2024. They also predict China's real estate construction will shrink for three consecutive years, setting a record for the longest consecutive decline. Bloomberg reported on January 4th that Fitch Ratings downgraded the ratings of China's four major state-owned asset management companies due to concerns about their financial conditions and expectations of reduced government support. In 2023, the South Korean government established a working group specifically to closely monitor the economic risks in China, focusing on how the Chinese economy will evolve and how the Chinese government will respond. After three years of pandemic, Western governments and major companies decoupled from the Chinese supply chain. Foreign asset management companies are also accelerating the withdrawal from the Chinese financial market. Vanguard confirmed its withdrawal from China in November last year, and BlackRock announced the liquidation of its stock funds in China in September. The three largest pension funds in Canada and the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund also announced the closure of their offices in China. According to data from Prechen, as of November 24th, private equity funds focusing on acquisitions in China did not raise a single cent in 2023, compared to 210 million U.S. dollars in 2022 and a staggering 13.2 billion before the pandemic in 2019. On February 13th, Morgan Stanley Capital International removed 66 Chinese companies from its MSCI China Index in its latest quarterly review. According to data released by China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange on February 18th, the direct investment liabilities reflecting foreign capital inflows amounted to only 33 billion dollars in 2023, plummeting by 82 percent from 2022, reaching the lowest level since 1993. This highlights the lack of confidence among foreign investors in the Chinese market. And reflects the significant difficulties the CCP government faces in seeking more overseas investments. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi perhaps sensed the chill of decoupling between the West and the Chinese economy. He no longer displayed the arrogant and domineering attitude like past Chinese wolf warriors at the Munich Security Conference on February 18th. He claimed that the vast ocean of the world economy cannot revert to isolated small lakes. And economic globalization cannot be reversed. However, this self-directed performance was clearly unappealing. In fact, more and more discerning people in Western countries realize that only by decoupling from China can they mitigate risks and jump out of the broken car before it falls off the cliff. In early August 2023, U.S. President Biden stated that the Chinese economy is a ticking time bomb and said, "When bad folks have problems." They do bad things. To some people, this seems to suggest that in order to divert domestic economic problems, the CCP may seek war to relieve pressure, such as launching a war against Taiwan. This could drag the United States, Japan, and other countries into the quagmire of war, posing a great threat to world peace and causing economic turmoil. The current situation is not optimistic, especially for countries or multinational corporations with very close economic ties with China. Take Germany for example. Data released by the German Central Bank shows that in 2023, Germany's direct investment in China increased by 4.3 percent to a record 12 billion euros, or about 13 billion U.S. dollars. Against declining Sino-European and Sino-U.S. trade and stronger efforts to de-risk, this number is particularly eye-catching. Despite repeated requests from the German government for German companies to reduce trade with China. And significantly reduce the guarantees provided to German companies for investment in China. Chancellor Scholz's cabinet is still divided on the issue of trade risks with China. Many German companies still do not pay enough attention to the risks of trade with China. Another representative multinational corporation is Tesla. Tesla announced an increased investment in Shanghai in April 2023 to build a new energy storage superfactory in the city. Which will start production in the second quarter of this year. Whether it's BMW, Mini from Germany, or Tesla, they have all experienced varying degrees of Chinese nationalism attack.
in the incident at the 2023 Shanghai Auto Show where BMW Chinese staff was accused of discriminating against fellow Chinese by handing out ice creams to Westerners. BMW suffered a loss of up to 16 billion yuan and was forced to apologize. Tesla has long been criticized harshly by Chinese domestic media. If it weren't for its excellent product performance and quality, it would have been pushed out of the market by Chinese competitors long ago. Imagine if the international situation between China and the West becomes tense, the CCP will definitely incite more domestic national sentiments and companies will face another crisis. After all, the Chinese little pinks have never hesitated to smash foreign brand cars. Although the European Union and the United States often try to use more moderate diplomatic terms like de-risking instead of more explicit terms like decoupling to describe their relationship with China, the fact that China is drifting farther away from Europe and the West is undeniable. This cannot be concealed by euphemistic terms. Moreover, it's not just the West that's seeking de-risking or decoupling, but rather the CCP actively seeking decoupling while displaying gestures of reconciliation. After Xi Jinping came to power, there has been a gradual formation of a new Maoist ideology, the return to the original aspiration of communism and the signs of returning to a planned economy have become increasingly apparent. Under this intrinsic drive, there have been a series of self-destructive policies and actions leading to a worsening of Chinese society and economy. The revision and passing of the counter-espionage law on April 26, 2023 was a heavy push to decoupling. Just imagine employees of foreign companies in China or foreign company employees on business trips to China being subject to espionage scrutiny at any time. Imagine all foreign companies in China being forced to set up CCP branches internally and possibly being influenced in their business decisions. Can foreign companies still have a normal investment and business in China? This is not an exaggeration. According to data from the Chinese government in 2017, the last year of Xi Jinping's first term, 70% of foreign-funded enterprises had already established such organizations internally, and now the proportion of foreign-funded enterprises with CCP branches is certainly even greater. Compared to the external economic decoupling and signs of a Great Depression, China is also undergoing a profound transformation internally, namely internal decoupling, which is a significant split occurring within the Chinese society and the political class. This is perhaps the real crisis that the CCP finds difficult to confront, and its nature and severity far exceed perceptions. A deeper rift is happening between the top leaders of the CCP and other groups in the bureaucratic system. For example, the relentless and brutal power struggles within the top ranks of the CCP, such as the sudden suspicious death of former Premier Li Keqiang, have never stopped. After the high-level purge in the Chinese military at the end of last year, just look at the gaze of Zhang Youxia, the vice chairman of the Central Military Commission. Xi Jinping is probably having sleepless nights. The CCP issues, opinions of the CCP Central Committee and the State Council on promoting the development and growth of the private economy, while also implementing the counter-espionage law that causes panic among foreign companies. Premier Li Chang tries to express goodwill saying China sincerely welcomes companies from all countries to continue investing in China and will do its utmost to improve China's business environment on one hand, but also constantly inciting nationalist sentiment, such as criticizing the discharge of radioactive water for the Fukushima nuclear power plant or frequently calling for the boycott of foreign brands, while continually opposing protests of decoupling from Europe and the United States. China also constantly initiates conflicts that lead to more decoupling. Behind the seemingly contradictory actions, there is actually a profound internal and structural decoupling quietly taking place within the CCP system. As this internal decoupling and division continue, the failure or dysfunction of the government will become increasingly evident. There will also be more group events in society, forcing the highest levels of authoritarianism to endlessly intensify social stability, and internal cleansing efforts. However, this cannot continue indefinitely. Like the historical upheavals in Eastern Europe and the collapse of the former Soviet Union, China's authoritarian rule might also shatter at a sudden point or after one incident. All that is left is the last straw that breaks the camel's back. Xi Jinping and the CCP, as they grow more authoritarian, who's to say they won't see the same fate as Eastern Europe, 
and the former Soviet Union.